Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at Unity Muse and their closed beta for Unity's AI solution, which is very similar to ChatGPT in the way that you can add a text based prompt, it will give you code suggestions, and other things like that. Now, with this being closed beta, you have to take everything with a pinch of salt and it will improve over time because Unity have got a full discussion section for be able to post your ideas, your suggestions and how to improve it. So I wanted to look at using it a little bit today, compare it to ChatGPT where I've already got some solutions and see if it comes up with the same ideas or whether I agree with things that it does. Do be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 195 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And check out all the links in the description for the current summer sale and the video that I made on the best assets you'll want in every project. So first of all, you get onto the website here and you can ask it anything you want. Now I wanted to quickly show you that it does have some inspiration. These don't seem to change, which it would be nice if there was a little cycle button or something. You can actually specify the editor version if you specifically want information on that one, which I'll grab from the documentation. Let's click on a button here, which is how to make my game accessible. You can see here that we've got, we can clear the chat. It doesn't have any functionality for chat history like chat GPT currently does. And it's got some additional resources along the side. Now it does give you in this case, how to make my game more accessible. It gives some suggestions as you would expect to have things for colorblind modes, having lots of inputs, multiple controls and have a diverse set of players be able to test your game. Now it does also generate resources of where it found this information. So you can click on it. And in this case, it didn't actually find anything, which is quite humorous. And then in the next one, we go to specific Unity documentation, which is about access control or maybe about multiple controls. So I quite like the ability to showcase where it's finding the information. So I might be able to read more than just the specific tips and tricks that it's given me. Now there is also an option that they're giving you. You can copy the text out of them. You can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And the voting system seems to be a way to decide whether Unity's got this right and wrong. Give, say it gives you a, a prompt that you didn't like. You can say to it, no, that's not good enough or it doesn't work or you can just thumbs up. So I'll just write a thumbs down here and say that the uh, first link is missing in the sources section. So then they've received some feedback in regards to that. Now you can just click back on the homepage and I don't really like how it visually looks because it's very, very dark and you sometimes have to refresh it again to get the sort of overlay looking properly. I don't know if it's specifically to do with my browser or not. Now I wanted to just give an example of putting it side by side chat GPT. Now I was working on my note system yesterday and it, when I adjust the height in code, it will scale uniformly like this. Now, I didn't want it to scale up and down at the same rate on the Y axis. I just wanted it to scale from the bottom downwards. Now I asked ChatGPT how to do it because I'm trying to put that feature. And then it gave the suggestion, I should be able to set the pivot to one in this case. And it gave me some code, but I didn't need to do that. I could just literally set that within the inspector. So let's do the same. And I'll paste that exact thing into Muse and see if it gives me a good suggestion. An internal server error is never a good one, so maybe let's paste it again. So by this, they've given pretty much the same information that I can set the Y pivot to one. So when I do it in Unity and set it to one, and then I scale the height, it does scale uh, the bottom downwards just like I wanted, which is ideal. And I'll give it a thumbs up and I'll just send it because we're like that. So in this example, I just got ChatGPT to optimize some methods, some really simple methods, which you can just use a tertiary operator to set them without having to use an if else statement. And let's see if Muse can do something relatively simple like that. So then after several times when there was an internal server error, it eventually just gave me the optimization that I was looking for. It does seem to give sources for the best practices for color constants. Now it doesn't take me to anywhere that seems to be very relevant and um, best practices for caching, which doesn't seem to be wholly relevant in this case. I did ask ChatGPT how to create a sound effect or something to create, make it sound like it's slow motion. So it suggested that I could change the pitch of the audio and get that effect to make it sound like things had slowed down. So if I ask the same question to Unity Muse, and then it did seem to give the suggestion that I can use audio source.pitch and be able to change that, especially over time. And it gave me an example and that's a good way to do it. And it gives me examples of how I can go about doing this. And it also gives me a link to Unity audio filters to be able to take that and maybe use that in a particular way to get more information on what I want. 
And then I asked ChatGPT a very specific question about Unity editor scripting. And I said that I wanted to be able to save when somebody opens and closes the inspector. And it did suggest to me that Unity doesn't serialize custom inspectors by default because that's not by design. And you can use something called editor prefs to be able to save that. So it gave a suggestion saying that we can use get bool to get whatever saved. And we can also use set bool in this case. When we open and close a particular header group, save that change in editor prefs. And I just said, couldn't we just use it as create a public property to get set, to get whatever the current state is and to be able to set it when the value changes. And it did say, yeah, that is fine. So I'm going to ask this exact same question. I'm going to paste this into Unity Muse. So I would say in this case, it did suggest that I can use editor prefs and it actually gave me a full set of code, which was not the full code that I'd actually given with pure examples of how to write it, even in the on enable to be able to load what I need. And then within the on inspector GUI, we just have the same things that I had before, but now we have a set of, like I suggested to chat GPT, some private properties to be able to get and set the data, which I think is quite a nice way to do it. And so I clicked on the first inspiration. It says, create me a simple imagery system. And it gives some steps on how the, we can do that. So I've written, write me some code based on those instructions. And so in this case, it's created me a scriptable object for the item in the inventory, which is a name, a description, an icon, and then the inventory script itself to be able to have a list, to be able to add or remove items from the list and check if it contains a particular item. And then the specific script, which is broken up of an infantry UI. So we've got specific logic in different areas to be able to update the UI and to be able to create new slots for when we might pick them up to be able to create and instantiate the slot wherever we want it based on if we'd actually created a prefab to the inventory. So from there, I asked it to create me the item pickup script, which it suggested in its solution. And it did have a way to just to select the inventory because we've already made a public reference to it to be able to add the item, which is fine. And then destroy the item if we don't want it anymore, which I guess is also fine, but depending on how much you destroy and I never like to use public fields, but Again, it's just a basic showcase. And then I, did, I said that you didn't actually showcase using the UI or to be able to update the UI. So then it showed about updating the inventory. And now it actually shows using events and on inventory changed, which is I think is a bit of a big jump compared to what it was showing before. Because up here, it was just using references to the other scripts, which is fine. You could just created a reference to the UI manager and be able to update there. But for a lot of people who may be new, I think that's a bit of a big jump in logic. People might argue with me and say that it's not. You could ask why it's done that. So I've said to it, why did you use the event action for updating the inventory UI? And it does have a good set of suggestions that you're decoupling and you've got a lot of flexibility when you can subscribe to the event. Other things can subscribe to it or it can update it only when it needs to be done. And these things are just decoupled so you don't have the issues down the line. So I quite like the suggestions that it's given. So I think it did make some genuinely good solutions, but you can let me know what you think. But of course, the more that the community uses it and specifies what version and whether it's good or bad code. And if we get some chat history, because once it's gone, it's gone. Like when I clear the chat, it's gone forever, which I don't really like. You can go back to the main screen. I think if there was more options, more information, more things to give inspiration, I think that would be a great thing. Or maybe what's even popular that people have searched, or, the, or maybe that goes against people's privacy in using these tools. I'd like to hear your thoughts on exactly what you think you could use AI for, or whether you think it's even a good idea. And be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 195 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Check out all the sales that are going on at this moment in time. I'll put all the links down in the description. Check out the sale for my adventure puzzle kit, which is now on, and get massive savings across everything. Big thanks to Peter Steiner, Mike Cullen, Thuan Chu, and Isidora Negri, and everybody else who comes to support the video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.